Hey everyone, my name's James and this is a brand new episode of Music Biz News. On August 20th, Hard Rock Legends Korn performed a virtual concert for players in the video games Adventure Quest 3D and AQ Worlds. Now this was not the first in-game concert of 2019. That honor goes to Marshmallow, who performed for 10 million people in a game of Fortnite back in January, but it was a move forward for the concert meets video game world. You see, while Korn performed on stage, and when I say perform, I mean studio versions of their songs played as avatars of the group performed, players were able to battle monsters, some of which were based on things from the music of Korn, and enjoy the music simultaneously. It's, that's never happened before, and as you can see in the footage that's playing right now, it's pretty cool to look at. The question remains, however, is this something that actually adds value to the career of Korn? Are they performing for people who already like their music, or are they creating new fans by going to these platforms that haven't really been explored by musicians? Furthermore, do people who like video games really enjoy these concerts? I mean, if I want to listen to a band while I play a game, I can just put their music on. Do I really need a virtual concert where I'm looking at avatars of those people perform? I don't really have any answers right now, but it seems safe to say that in-game concerts are now a trend and it's going to continue for the foreseeable future. Heading over to the world of streaming, ByteDance, the company that owns TikTok, is allegedly planning to launch its own streaming service before the end of the first quarter in 2020. This is according to a report from Billboard, which says ByteDance is currently negotiating licensing deals with all major labels regarding its service, and it's happening at the same time the company is renegotiating licensing contracts for TikTok. You see, when TikTok launched, it benefited from these discounted licensing deals, which exist to help music startups grow. Now that the platform has over 1 billion downloads worldwide, labels want more money, and ByteDance is using those negotiations as an opportunity to introduce its streaming service. Industry analysts are undecided about whether or not the service will actually make a difference, however, as the market for streaming has become incredibly saturated. It's unclear what ByteDance will offer that Spotify, Tidal, Apple Music, Amazon Music, and all other streaming services don't, but the company is hoping to capitalize on the streaming movement more and more in the new year. In other streaming news, Spotify announced this week that it is extending the free trial period for its new premium subscriptions from one month to three months, effective immediately. Now this deal rivals what Apple Music has offered since day one, but it is still upsetting many people in the music industry. You see, Spotify has a reputation for being a low-cost dealer in the world of streaming. It often offers things like three months of premium service ad-free for just 99 cents, and consumers eat that up. In fact, the company has over 108 million subscriptions worldwide, and it's only going to grow with this new offer. However, as more people stream more music, the amount the company has to pay artists per stream drops. And Spotify is already one of the lowest paying services in the world. In fact, most artists make just 0.003 cents per stream, and that number will drop as more people use the service and more songs get streamed. It's a tough problem of economics that many are trying to solve. In fact, there are petitions trying to set an industry standard for royalty rates from streaming, but all the major platforms, including Spotify, are fighting back. What happens from here? We'll just have to wait and see. Finally this week, I want to talk about Taylor Swift. While appearing on Good Morning America to promote her new record, Lover, Swift confirmed some rumors that had been circulating online. Check it out. I was going to wait to ask you about that, but since you went there, this is something that is very important to you, and you've also said that you're planning on re-recording some of your music. Is that true? Wait a minute. Are you going to do that? Yeah, that's true, and it's something that I'm very excited about doing because my contract says that starting November 2020, so next year, I can record albums one through five all over again. So, and you'll do that. I'm very excited about it. Now, this news is pretty crazy. Re-recording five albums is no small feat, but it's why Taylor Swift is doing this that is so important. Why is this so important to you? Because I just think that I think that artists deserve to own their work. I just feel very passionately about that. Now, Swift has long been an advocate for artists being able to own their own songs. After all, that doesn't seem like a big request. But in the world of major labels and record negotiations, that's very rarely what happens. Labels want to ensure that they get the money back for their investment, and owning the masters, they feel, is the best way to ensure that happens. But I think it's something that happened in July that pushed Taylor to this decision. 
you see Scooter Braun, the guy who manages Justin Bieber, Ariana Grande, and sometimes Kanye West, purchase Swift's former label, Big Machine Label Group, for $300 million, and in doing so became the sole owner of her masters. Taylor did not like this. She posted a huge blog on Tumblr detailing her frustrations and feelings of betrayal, but I think it's the revenge she found in this news that's going to make everyone very happy. By re-recording her songs, Swift will not only be able to own those master recordings, but the songs will no doubt rank higher on streaming platforms, especially after she tells her fans to check them out. Why would her fans choose to support Scooter Braun, a person that Taylor has vilified through all of her posting, when they could stream new versions of the songs, which Taylor herself owns and personally oversaw the creation of? But how is she able to do this? It's standard industry practice that artists are prevented from re-recording their music until two years after their contract ends, or until five years after the last commercial release. Beginning in November 2020, Taylor's first five records will be available for re-recording. The only one not available, 2017's Reputation. And that'll come in time, but those first five records have tons of hits, and Taylor will be perfectly within legal bounds to re-record them. Now, whether or not she can record exact duplicates of those songs remains to be seen. The details of Swift's contract with Big Machine are not public but she will be able to record versions of those songs, which fans will no doubt eat up. And if there are new versions, that might even be better because fans will want to hear what else she wants to do with that material. Swift isn't the first person to do this. Def Leppard famously re-recorded some of their biggest hits after years of trying to fight with their old label for rights to their music, as well as financial compensation. And just earlier this year, the band Silverstein self-released an album that containing re-recorded versions of songs from their first few records after years of fighting with their old label. It seems like it shouldn't be that hard to understand that artists should own their own music. In fact, that's what we believe here. If you make it, you should own it. But that's just not how the music industry has historically worked. However, things are changing, and with Swift leading the way through this news, I think more artists will follow suit. Will she still be sued? Probably. Will there be more controversies? Almost certainly. But we stand with you, Taylor, and we stand with anyone else who is fighting the fight to own their recordings. Real quick, I need you to follow us on YouTube. Yes, click that button below and you will be subscribed to all of our upcoming content. There's a lot of it. We put out three to five videos every single week, all on the music business, how you can succeed in it, and how you can better understand it. So please, click that button. I also want you to check out our sponsor. Holix.com is the industry standard for music promotion. People like Chance the Rapper, Green Day, Blink-182, Fall Out Boy, Panic at the Disco, and thousands more trust Holix with their music promotion, and you should too. For a free trial, head over to holix.com. There is a link in the description below. And also, if you like, leave us a comment. We read everything and we try our best to respond to it all. So please drop something below, talk to us. And if you do all that or if you don't do all that, at the very least, take care of yourself because you deserve it.